Well, the restoration and preservation of 259 gravestones at the historic Hancock Cemetery in Quincy Center is well underway. And we had a chance to catch up recently with uh, Tamara Conde and also folks from the Quincy City Historical Commission and the City Planning Department to get kind of an update on the project and take a look at some of the actual restoration in process. So please join us as we take a tour through the historic Hancock Cemetery. Kara, first tell us a little bit about what you do for the city, first of all. Sure. I'm an assistant planner and I work in the planning department with Christina Johnson mostly under Dennis Harrington, the director. Um, right now we're working on the preservation and conservation project at the cemetery here and I also work on some bike planning issues and climate change preparedness. Um, yeah, so those are my three main concentrations right now. So this, this project here at the cemetery, um, talk about the scope of this, how it all came about basically, how did, how did this happen? Okay, so we started um, planning for the preservation and restoration of the cemetery in 2011, 2010. We created a master conservation plan with Halverson Design Partnership, who's a landscape architecture firm in Boston. Um, that led to the application to Mass Historic in, let's see, March of last year for some grant funding through their Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund. Um, we received an award of $33,000 from them in June of last year and then we started doing a public procurement process to um, lead us to a conservator selection process uh, through which we chose Historic Gravestone Services which Tamara is the owner of, Tamara Conde. Um, we worked closely with the Historical Commission, the Quincy Historical Commission, um, the Community Preservation Committee, and we also communicated with the Cemetery Board in Quincy, um, the Mayor's Office, and ultimately this is a planning department project, but it, it was with um, the help of all these different groups coming together um, for the cemetery that we were able to accomplish the project. All right, I know that you actually applied for community preservation funds for this right. project. Yes. Yeah. We were we received an allocation from the Community Preservation Committee in June of 2012 for $80,000 and that was our um, community or city match for the the project that we then submitted the application to Mass Historic for. So we committed $80,000 of our money and then received $33,000 from MHC. And actually in June this you know, past month, we received an additional $10,000 from Mass Historic with you know, funding that hadn't been committed that they had already kind of set aside for preservation projects. So now we have $43,000 from MHC to do our work. So why is this cemetery project here important to the overall downtown development plan? It's um, one, one factor in several different projects that are coming together to form a revitalized Quincy Center. Um, so the Adams Green project will decommission a portion of Hancock Street between the City Hall and the Church of the Presidents. And this will be a historic um, and cultural kind of uh, attraction that will connect visitors to the MBTA station, to the restored um, old city hall, which is under construction now. So we're hoping that this will just be one piece of like a, a many, many different projects going on that'll come together for this exciting new downtown. Kara, what are we standing in front of here at the Hancock Cemetery? This is Hancock Cemetery's receiving tomb. Um, it was used back in the day to store bodies that for whatever reason weren't, they didn't have a spot available yet in the cemetery to be buried. And we, we opened this up a few months ago um, and found about 27 pieces of, either pieces of gravestones or full gravestones, like this one is a, a footstone, I believe, that's intact. And this, this marker here, um, I don't know if you can see inside, but there are a few more. So we were very excited to find that many, and our conservator, Tamara, was able to match some of the pieces to other broken um, grave markers here that together they made a, a full marker, finally. So someone years ago had the foresight at least to save yeah. these pieces. Yeah, they'd been using it as storage. So um, we didn't know that they were there. It seemed like it kind of got forgotten, I think. someone.
Was this locked up? It was locked up. I think people actually, they knew that there was something in there, some stuff in there, but we didn't know how much and what exactly was in there. So it was, it was interesting and it was exciting to find it. Yeah. It was locked up. There was some trash and some, the shelf in there had fallen over. So the stones were sort of scattered all over the place. And we cleaned it out with the cemetery staff and um, now it's also being used as storage while we're doing work here. So I would think that you professionally have learned quite a bit from this project when it comes to yeah. history of the city and of this cemetery. I think it's fascinating. I love history and especially the history that's tangible like you know architecture or cemeteries where you can really there's evidence of what how people worked on the stones over the years and how people have cared for them over the years too like the the changes in preservation techniques i think is really interesting too so i've learned a lot and i've loved every step of it tomorrow talk to us if you could first of all a little bit about what's happening right now today here at the cemetery um well we've got a couple sites that we're working on at this site um we're putting in a new base for a broken slate little footstone for Samuel Thompson. It's split down the middle, so I made a special slot through base that the stone will go down inside, the base will sit around it. Then I'll, I'll use some yawn restoration mortar to put the two pieces back together. And it'll set up in, in this little base, the grass will cover the base, and it'll look like it should originally. There's like several different things that we do here. Mostly it's reset and straighten. And if it's uh, what we consider a tablet stone, that's a, just a stone tablet that part of it's sticking in the ground without any kind of base or support, which is mostly what is found here. So we just dig them out, clear out big rocks that may have been pushing against it and leaning it, and um, reset it with some sand and gravel and loam mix to compact it so it'll stand up straight and the water will move away from it. And there's. 259 on the original scope of work. There's 1,025 stones in the cemetery. I guess this is phase one of, of this, this stuff. None of the tombs are being worked on at this time. But um, it's one of the larger projects I've worked, 250 in a, <laughs> in a short time span. Has anything uh, surprised you? Something that you didn't expect to encounter during this project? Um, not. Not really. I mean, they're all pretty much, I've worked in colonial cemeteries a lot, so so we see very similar. It's, it's wonderful to see things like um, the common man and the president buried in the same common grave. Um, there's stories in here and, and um, some beautiful carvings on the, on the stones. A lot of, uh, I'm part of an association of gravestone studies and we study the carvers and different um, styles and techniques. So I'm interested in, there's some really great carvers in here. Um, there's an interesting stone that has peacocks on it. And you think, 1700s, where did they see peacocks? They wanted peacocks on there, you know? And this probably came out of, well, of course, like Turkey, but really out of women's um, embroidery books and things like that. They would um, have these books passed around and all the women got the same designs. May have come out of that type of design, but to see peacocks in Quincy was kind of interesting. What, what would you say is the importance of this particular cemetery in the big scheme of cemeteries throughout the country? I mean, where, where does this kind of rank in terms of um, importance? Well, I mean, of course, you've got the Adams, the Quincy, the Bass, the Spear, all these families, the Marsh, all these important players that were here in the beginning. But like I said before, next to the poor, the, you know, the average guy, um, I'm always interested in the stories that aren't really recorded in, on paper. We know everything about John Adams. We know everything about John Quincy. But there's a stone in the back of this cemetery that's for a woman, Hannah Banks. She was 15. She was married, her and her husband. And they came from Zanesville, Ohio. I'm partial because I'm from Ohio originally. And um, they came here to work in the shoe factory because Quincy was famous for shoemaking. And uh, women weren't allowed to work in the factory, so she disguised herself as a man. They got 
busted and fired, <laughs> lost their housing, which went along with their, their factory job. And two hunters found them, I guess about a month later, in a frozen embrace. They had died in each other's arms. And they're buried in the same cemetery as the president was. So, and her father and mother, who were so distraught in Ohio, um, had a very nice stone made for them. It says all their information. It says that they're from Zanesville. It doesn't say that they worked in the shoe factory, but at the bottom of the stone, it says they were deluded by the writings of A.J. Davis, not the guy that owned the factory, but the agent who was employed to put the ad in the paper in Ohio that drew these people here. So when you consider, even today, we pay per letter her size a letter on your gravestone for her parents, who were obviously probably poor farmers, to have this nice big stone and that ex extra line down there naming this guy for eternity. I think that's pretty cool <laughs> stuff, you know. Now, the families of uh, folks that, that are buried here, has anybody uh, kind of uh, approached you, really? We've had, I, I've had a huge amount of visitors. I mean, of course, tourists from all over the world come in. Um, and everyone, you know, asks me where everybody is. But all the locals have been in, some who say they haven't been in here, even though they lived here, started to wander around, see the beauty. It's a park in the middle of your town. I mean, in the springtime, all these little flowering trees and everything. But I've had um, several families have come in. The descendants of Sarah Hall have been in. Um, they were concerned uh, whether her stone was actually being worked on. It was being worked on. So they talked to me about what was going to happen to it, how it was going to be cared for. They also have a, a soldier buried up in one of the tombs, so they were concerned about that, that person. Um, I've had a, another guy who's involved in, I, I think, winemaking, but he's a descendant of Adams, Quincy, Spear, Bass. He was in to see who's stones I was working on and and check on his ancestors so yeah they're still around there's um, Grace French had a visitor the other day a young man I mean college student coming in to see where his descendants are so yeah I mean it's not just the descendants of Quincy it's you know the descendants of the French and everybody that come in so they're concerned once um, this particular project is is complete what will be left to be done here at the cemetery? Well, more of the same. Um, as I said, we're repairing 250 considered the top priority stones. Um, and then there'll be like priority two stones that will probably be repaired in the next round. And I'm gonna guess 250 at a crack. Um, you have a thousand stones, probably there's maybe 10 that don't need something done to it. So they should probably go through, and and then I think they wanted to do more with the tombs and that. So, so what is it um, tomorrow when you're done here that you hope folks will kind of take away from the, the, the project after they visit? You know, what is it? What is it? What is the message that you want them to 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 feel when you're done with this project? Well, actually, as a conservator, you're supposed to leave this place, and it shouldn't look like I've been here. Um, that's why, like, the base is submerged underground. I do the repairs, but it shouldn't look like I did it. It should just look nice and not different. Talk to us about what's happening here. Well, this is one of those tablet stones that's kind of started leaning. And we need to take it out of the, the ground. We'll prep the area, and then we'll put it back in, as plumb, and it should stay that way for a while. So we've taken away the sod here and removed the dirt and all the excess rocks and we sift the, the dirt so we just get the loam back and we're going to now lift the stone up put it back here on some wood we'll clean the, the stone off take off all the lichens and that and we'll finish making the hole the right height or depth i should say We'll get some sand and gravel out of the back, mix it with the loam and put it back, compact it back in, and it should stand up straight for a few more years. How many stones have you had to use this device, this process for? In here, um, probably about 30 stones. Okay, So. and how long is this process? I have another means of picking it up just with boards. Okay. So we've done some of those, but 
sometimes I have to bring out the big equipment. Right, right. And once you're done here, how long will this be good for? How long will this be um, set for? I, I jokingly say I guarantee my work for 100 years. You got a problem, <laughs> call me. But it should stay plumb unless some tree branch comes down on it or something. It should stay plumb for about 100 years. Once we remove the rocks, the rocks were the problem. With the frost heaves and that, it pushes on them. And that's what probably pushed it forward. So we're just set her straight back up. I'll step out of the way and we'll let you do your job. OK, thanks. I'm clearing, okay, and just let this slide down a little bit so you can pull it back. Oops. All right, just till it hits the ground and then we'll. Okay. It's going to want to go to this side. So let's move this side, put the wood over here because it's got this angled bottom. It's okay. This isn't much help now. And the toll of the bell. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay. So if you can just try and guide it back towards you a little bit. Once it starts to hit the ground, it'll. Let it go ahead and sit on this side a little. Yep. Okay. Push the wood up underneath so it's not. Yeah. There we go. And now we just want it where 